like I think it's broke. We don't want that to happen. Well, welcome to Mescal. Have anybody been here before? First time for everyone. Okay. So long before the set was built, Hollywood had several productions, at least some outside scenes, done up here on this plateau where we're standing. We had movies like Winchester 73 from 1950. We had The Big Country of Gregory Peck. We had Cimarron with Glenn Ford. Are we familiar with those three movies, or at least some of them? Good, good. Now, what they did is they didn't they didn't film the movies up here in their entirety. They just used this plateau region for some of the outside scenes. And if you take a look around, you can see why they're going to use this backdrop. You have the back of the Rincons. You have the Dragoons to the east. You have a lot of beautiful scenery up here to take advantage of. Now, in 1969, the film was made here called Monty Walsh of Lee Marvel. How many of us know that movie? Okay, right now you're my favorite, so well done. But, but you can fall off the list really quickly. That was the whole reason the town was built for Monty Walsh. After the production wrapped up, the town was going to be destroyed. But luckily, Bob Shelton was the president then of Old Tucson Studios. We know, how many people don't know where Old Tucson is? Everybody knows Old Tucson good, but you're right. Well, he had the foresight to purchase the set because he knew now Old Tucson can give production companies a snore desert look, and Mescal can give them a high desert plains kind of look. Now, back then, they called the town Happy Valley, because that was in reference to Happy Valley, just up here in the back of the Rincons. So that was at the time down state. In the movie, Monty Walsh was called the town of Mark. But once uh, Old Tucson purchased it, it didn't take very long, and they changed the name to Mescal. So if we fast forward many, many decades, December of 2020, Old Tucson was out of business. They have to shut The set once again was going to get torn down because we were on the state land that the state was going to take control of the year. But thankfully, February 14th of 2021, Valentine's Day, Jay Cart and Jake and JJ Carson purchased the set because they were aware of the movie history down there. They didn't want to see all that movie. So let me do a uh, sampling of the filmography done out here in Moscow, and I'm just going to hit the bigger budget film. So we're going to work our way from the earliest to the latest. Here's Monty Walsh. How about Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean? How many of us know that film? Paul Newman. Good. All right. Very good. That was done almost 100% of that time. So we had Outlaw Judge. I'm sorry, I skipped Dirty Dingus. We gave it Frank Sinatra. Remember that one? Yeah, that's a lesser known Western comedy. How about Life and Times? Oh, jeez. How about Joseph Wales? Yeah, 12 minutes of that was filmed here. We're going to stop down at the middle of the street where that whole 12 minutes would have been filmed. How about the greatest Western ever made? Tom Ford, Steve McQueen. You know that movie? You are now my confirmed favorite. <laughs> that is my favorite Western. Of course it is. All righty. What's that? It does, well, it, yeah, it's, and it's a beautifully told story, I think. It's not a shoot 'em up movie, but it's just well told. I really enjoy it. How about that little known Western? Uh, it's an independent film. Uh, I think a bunch of college kids did it. It was called uh, Tombstone with Kurt Russell. We all know, anybody know that one? That, about 60% of that was done here on set. And then the last big, big budget that was done here would have been Book of the Dead. We know that one? All right, we're going to be talking a lot about everyone. We're going to include all those films in there. But what you're going to see today, as far as the roof lines and the faces, largely is what's left over from when they renovated the town to make the tombstone at night. The production crew spent two months out here changing the faces of the buildings and the roof lines to get the look they wanted. And for the most part, those general uh, structures have remained that way since 1993. There's been some tweaks here and there. Uh, but Quick and the Dead, they didn't change much. They just repainted and re-facaded them. Except for the building behind them, which we're going to talk about at the end of the tour. That was built just for the with the famous production center. Now, the livery, where we're starting at today, features prominently in one big budget question, that being Tom. But it 
there was also a location to see that there was going to be another big budget western, but you don't actually see the livery. What I mean by that is in the roof of the head, where you're all standing, is where the facade of the boarding house was located. The boarding house had the clock tower off to your right, and Tombstone, where you're standing, would have been the facade of the Birdcage Theater. Now remember in Tombstone, they do have the scene with the Cowboys, the Earps, Doc Holliday are being entertained inside of the Birdcage. That interior shot was done in tomb, that tomb, old Tucson in the South Stage. The South Stage, unfortunately, burned down in 1995 when most of the town was burned down. But this was the exterior of the Birdcage where the Birdcage was located. Now I mentioned about Tom Ford and this feature probably in that. This is the living room that brings us to the beginning of the film. So if you follow me in, I'm going to lay out two seats for you. And that is an authentic 1881 generator, by the way. <laughs> Alrighty, so the opening credits are rolling. Tom Steve McQueen is shown riding his horse into town. They bring he brings his horse into this livery, and right here in this stall is where he puts his horse. He closes the gate and he warns the stable keeper not to mess with that horse. He said, do not go into the stall. If you drop a dime in there, get your pitchfork to pull it out because that's a mother-in-law horse. And he says to the stable keeper, you know what a mother-in-law horse is, don't you? It's a horse you put your mother-in-law on, send them both up in the hills and hope they never come back. <laughs> the two men walk out. Tom pays the man. They cut scene. They pick up at the hotel. We're going to talk about that scene when we get down there. But that scene at the hotel ends when Tom comes out on the worst end of a uh, physical altercation. They cut scene again, and they pick up where Tom is laying right here, and he's laying under his horse. His mother-in-law horse is protecting him. In walks the actor Richard Farnsworth. How many of us remember him? No? He plays John Coble. He's one of the wealthy cattle barons in Wyoming. John comes in, opens up the gate, and he gets down on his knees, and right here is where arguably they film the, the first pivotal scene of the movie. This is when John Coble offers Tom a job on his ranch as a ranch hand, but that is very quickly, not too long uh, later in the movie, in the story, that's going to result in Tom becoming a stock detective. And a stock detective basically means an assassin for uh, cattle rustlers. So if anybody wants to come by here and get some of that Steve McQueen, King of Cool Energy, <laughs> now's your opportunity. Gents, you up for it? I'm vibrating right now standing here, so I'll give you the opportunity, but I do not guarantee results. Buildings down here to the south. These featured in Tombstone. Does anybody know how these cottages were in the movie Tombstone, what role they filled? Go ahead, Gettysburg. Okay, so the one on the left would have been Virgil's cottage. Virgil, okay. The one on the right would have been Wyatt's. Okay. So the one on the left, Virgil's, if you'd have been introduced to that in the movie, that's when the herb wives are playing with the tarot cards. Yeah. It's a night scene, it's thundering and lightning, there's high wind, kind of like right now. They're in there playing tarot cards, and Josie, Josie Marcus, comes by to warn them their lives are in danger. And not long after that, the assassin shows up and takes a shot at him. Okay. Later that night in the storyline, after Virgil is ambushed and wounded in the arm, it's inside of that, that cottage where uh, Sam Elliott will be laying on the couch. He's being tended to by the doctor. He and Wyatt get in an argument. Wyatt comes out, walks out through the front door. There was no picket fence there in that, at that time. And right in front of that, where the picket fence is, is where two jacks, Turkey Creek and Texas Jack, and Sherman McMaster's ride right up. And that's where they film the scene where Sherman Masters disavows the Cowboys and throws the red sash on the ground. Now, with Wyatt's Cottage, there was interior scenes done there. There wasn't a lot of exterior, except one you might remember is after the gunfight at the OK Corral, when they have the funeral procession making its way right down the street. On the porch there is where Morgan and Wyatt would have been sitting. And that's when Morgan expresses regret in uh, being part of the gunfight and killing him. 
Now, for those of you that have attention to detail, I do want to point out that when it was constructed and used in Tombstone, the front porch actually was deeper. That door entryway actually sat back about four more feet. But over the last 30 years, after the movie, since the movie's been made, some companies have come in and for whatever reason they decided to bring that front entryway out for whatever work they were, they were going for. And that's what it's like. It's going to be like during this tour. You're going to see changes. I'm going to point out to you because we are a movie studio. Things are going to change over time. You come back in ten years, and uh, it might look completely different than what it does today. So with that, folks, we're going to turn this way and we're going to head into town. is in the Chinese opium den, getting his fix. That opium tent would have been set up here in this empty alleyway. So this is where Powers Booth, playing Curly Bill, would have come out. He looks at his hands and says, I feel just capital. Then he starts shooting the town up. He shoots one round into this building here, into the window. In Tombstone, this building would have been the Andy Saloon Club and Saloon. And it had sort of a reddish tint of the light coming out through the window. Now he comes across the street after he shoots it up and he's challenged by Marshal Fred White. And then you might remember he flips his guns and kills Fred in the street. That would have been filmed right here at the opening of this alleyway. And then Wyatt comes out, he buffaloes Curly Bill, the cowboys come out and they try to rescue Bill. And the whole scene wraps up with Doc Holliday walking out of the Oriental and he says to Billy Clanton, I have two guns, one for each of all that would have been filmed right here, and right about where that bucket is with the lamp, the street light, that's about where Val Kimmer would have been standing when he, when he uh, uh, gets those lines. I have two guns, one for each of them. So this red building here that says Granny's Candy Kitchen, this, folks, would have been the Oriental Saloon at Now, I want to talk about this for just a second because it's going to tie in later on when we come back up this way. Back during the days of Monty Walsh, Tom Horn, and even before that, with the life of Tom and Judge Roy Bean, there was a two-story building that sat here. The one story you're seeing right now was built just for the When the Tombstone production crew came out here in 93, uh, the building that was there was in really bad shape. So they decided to tear it down and start from scratch. In the movie Tombstone, this left side, Granny's Kitchen, this would have been a, actually a two-story. They had a second-story facade built up on the top of it. Again, that would have served as the Oriental. The gold building would have served as camp. Whales and Indians come up through that alleyway. Whale kicked off his horse here. This building would have been Dyer Jenkins Dry Goods Store. This is where he goes in, buys his goods, and walks across the street. And anybody remember who he encounters over here as he's walking across the street? The, uh, sale. the snake oil sales and right. And he recognizes whales and he yells out, oh my God, it's Josie Wales. Yeah. On the boardwalk, or at least the boardwalk that was here then, that's where the four soldiers would have been standing. And then he, anybody remember the famous line Wales says as he's standing there holding his goods and he's staring down the cowboys? Are you going to pull those pistols and yeah. take yeah. Bam, bam, bam. So the soldiers go down. Whales and uh, Lone Wath, they run in and they ride out of town. Not quick in the dead. And remember what the kid, the Gunshot, exactly. It was awesome. It's a gunshot. So if you follow me inside, I'm going to lay out a scene of where you're from. And where you're from. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, you betcha. 
So, put in the deck, there would have been a glass gun case about where I'm standing. I'm standing roughly where Leonardo DiCaprio would have been. And in the scene that they filmed in here, this is when Gene Hackman's character, Herod, brings Russell Crowe's character, Court, over to get him a gun to be part of the gunfight. Now, Russell Crowe's in shackles, and DiCaprio and Hackman are standing here. DiCaprio um, demonstrates all the latest pistols that he has. And after he's done demonstrating, Hackman says, no, I want the most worthless piece of crap you have. And all the while they're doing that, Russell Crowe is shown pacing back and forth in front of that window behind him. Now, the building was built in 75 for uh, well, Josie Whip. That's exactly the purpose of this building. It was originally built with a corner-facing door. It didn't have a flat-faced door like you see here today. I also want to point out something from the Quick and the Dead for those of you that, that have an eye for detail. The bedroom, this back room would have been the bedroom. This is where Sharon Stone wakes up on a bed of furs. She looks underneath the furs and what does she find? Do you remember? Dynamite. Yeah. She's yeah. laying on the TNT. And it's designed that way. Now, before I step out, I'm going to let you have some a few minutes in here to take pictures. I do want to introduce you to Mr. Vanderspiegel. He is the proprietor of this shop. But uh, Gettysburg, I'm going to pick you up because you have the uh, squirrely eyes. Okay. Everything in here is barcode. So please don't steal it because we're going to wand you on the way out. We're going to find out if, if you... We're going to test your integrity. All right? Wand in my hand. <laughs> All right. So I'll give you a few minutes, folks, if you want to take some pictures. And then as you get done, if you can make your way out. Two buildings down here to the south. These featured in Tombstone. Does anybody know how these cottages were in the movie too, so what role they filled. Okay. So the one on the left would have been Virgil's cottage. Virgil, okay. The one on the right would have been Wyatt's. Okay. So the one on the left, Virgil's, you'd have been introduced to that in the movie. That's when the herb wives are playing the tarot cards. Yeah. It's a night scene. It's thundering and lightning. There's high wind, kind of like right now. They're in there playing tarot cards. And Josie, Josie Marcus, comes by to warn them their lives are in danger. And not long after that, the assassin shows up and takes a shot at him. Okay. Later that night in the storyline, after Virgil is ambushed and wounded in the arm, it's inside of that, that cottage where uh, Sam Elliott will be laying on the couch. He's being tended to by the doctor. He and Wyatt get in an argument. Wyatt comes out, walks out through the front door. There was no picket fence there in that, at that time. And right in front of that, where the picket fence is, is where... Two Jacks, Turkey Creek and Texas Jack, and Sherman Masters ride up. And that's where they film the scene where Sherman Masters disavows the Cowboys and throws the red sash on the ground. Now, with Wyatt's Cottage, there was interior scenes done there. There wasn't a lot of exterior, except one you might remember, is after the gunfight at the OK Corral, when they have the funeral procession making its way right down the street. On the porch there is where Morgan and Wyatt would have been sitting. That's when Morgan expressed his regret in uh, being part of the gunfight and killing a man. Now, for those of you that have attention to detail, I do want to point out that when it was constructed and used in Tombstone, the front porch actually was deep. That door entryway actually sat back about four more feet. But over the last 30 years, after the movie, since the movie has been made, some companies have come in and for whatever reason they decided to bring that front entryway out for whatever work they were, they were going for. And that's what it's like, it's going to be like during this tour. You're going to see changes I'm going to point out to you. Because we are a movie studio. Things are going to change over time. You come back in 10 years and uh, it might look completely different than what it does today. So with that, folks, we're going to turn this way and we're going to head into town. is in the Chinese opium den, getting this fix. That opium tent would have been set up here in this empty alleyway. So this is where Powers Booth, playing Curly Bill, would have come out. He looks at his hands and says, I feel just capital. Then he starts shooting the town up. He shoots one round into this building here, into the window. In Tombstone, this building would have 
been the Andy Saloon Club and Saloon. And it had sort of a reddish tint of the light coming out through the window. Now he comes across the street after he shoots it up and he's challenged by Marshal Fred White. And then you might remember he flips his guns and kills Fred in the street. That would have been filmed right here at the opening of this alleyway. And then Wyatt comes out, he buffaloes Curly Bill, the cowboys come out and they try to rescue Bill. And the whole scene wraps up with Doc Holliday walking out of the Oriental. And he says to Billy Clanton, I have two guns, one for each of All that would have been filmed right here. And right about where that bucket is with the lamp, the street light, that's about where Val Kilmer would have been standing when he, when he uh, uh, gives those lines. I have two guns, one for each of them. So this red building here that says Greeny's Candy Kitchen, this, folks, would have been the Oriental Saloon at Green's Now, I want to talk about this for just a second because it's going to tie in later on when we come back up this way. Back during the days of Monty Walsh, Tom Horn, even before that, with the life of Tom and Judge Roy Bean, there was a two-story building that sat there. The one story you're seeing right now was built because it was not When the Tombstone production crew came out here in 93, uh, the building that was there was in really bad shape, so they decided to tear it down and start from scratch. In the movie Tombstone, this left side, Granny's Kitchen, this would have been a, actually a two-story. They had a second-story facade built up on the top of it. Again, that would have served as the Oriental. The gold building would have served as King Horn has to build it in, so the movie was fine. Whales and Indians come up through that alleyway. Whale kicked off his horse here. This building would have been Dyer Jenkins' dry goods store. This is where he goes in, buys his goods, and walks across the street. And anybody remember who he encounters over here as he's walking across the street? The, uh, sale. the snake oil salesman, right. And he recognizes whales and he yells out, oh my God, it's Josie Wales. Yeah. On the boardwalk, or at least the boardwalk that was here then, that's where the four soldiers would have been standing. And then he, anybody remember the famous line Wales says as he's standing there holding his goods and he's staring down the cowboys? Pistols or yeah. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. Four soldiers go down. Whales and uh, Lone Wolf, they run in and they ride out of town. That much. Now, quick to the dead. And remember what the kid, Leonardo DiCaprio, was in the Gun shop, exactly. That was awesome. He gets gun shop. So if you follow me inside, I'm going to lay out a scene of where you're from. standing roughly where Leonardo DiCaprio would have been, and in the scene that they filmed in here, this is when Gene Hackman's character, Herod, brings Russell Crowe's character, Court, over to get him a gun to be part of the gunfight. Now, Russell Crowe's in shackles, and DiCaprio and Hackman are standing here. DiCaprio um, demonstrates all the latest pistols that he has. And after he's done demonstrating, Hackman says, no, I want the most worthless piece of crap you have. And all the while they're doing that, Russell Crowe is shown pacing back and forth in front of that window behind him. Now, the building was built in 75 for uh, well, Josie Wales. That's exactly the purpose of this building. It was originally built with a corner-facing door. It didn't have a flat-faced door like you see here today. I also want to point out something from the Quick and the Dead for those of you that, that have an eye for detail. The bedroom, this back room would have been the bedroom. This is where Sharon Stone wakes up on a bed of furs. She looks underneath the furs and what does she find? Do you remember? Dynamite. Yeah, She's laying on the All 
Alrighty folks, well, welcome to our Mescal Hotel. Uh, most of you are probably going to recognize this as the Grand Hotel from the movie Tombstone. Right up here where these young ladies are standing, this is where the herbs were pulled up the double back. justice to her story, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. When she comes out here to visit with the guests, she does a much better job telling us about that scene. So she's bare chest. And if you pay attention, guys, um, she does cover up uh, once the door gets kicked in. Well, the director wanted her to cover up slower. And they did about four takes, and she just could not cover up quickly. So she likes to tell people that she single-handedly saved two from being an X-rated movie. <laughs> now, in the quick and the dead, this would have been the pigeon's nest. The difference is it would have had a facade put over top of it of a very rough-looking type type of finish. So Tombstone was filmed out here first, before the quick and the dead, that is. When it was the Grand Palace Hotel in Tombstone, this would have had a bluish color to it. The quick and the dead came out, they facaded it put a very rough wood looking exterior it almost looks like brick from the, from a distance but if you look closely it's actually a, a rough wood exterior how many people here like uh, little house on the prairie okay you might have seen this in a uh, episode called gold country it's when the ingles leave walnut grove and they go to this lawless mining town to strike a bridge the hotel is seen in several scenes normally it's shown as an establishment shot after every commercial break. If they come back from a commercial, they'll have uh, miners over here fist fighting. They have small doves walking up on the balcony upstairs. But it gives just an establishment shot to let you know you're not going to prove anymore. Now, the building was originally built for Dirty Dingus McGee in 1970. But it was sat down here at the end of the street. And it was actually had a third story on it. It was used as a brothel in that when they came out in 71 to film Life and Times of Joe Droid Bean with Paul Newman, they moved it from that location where we see it today. We do have some archive photos where you can see under the porch how they had these wheeled jacks on it to get it moved over here. Now remember I mentioned about Tom Horn. After he puts his horse in the livery and he pays the man, they cut scene and they pick up here at the hotel. We're going to go in and talk about that right now. So follow me, please. <laughs> but that's all right. Whatever you want, you can want in here, folks. Wow. 
<laughs> All right, so Tom Horn. The scene starts. Tom walks through the door like we just came in. And remember, we just walked into the tombstone bedroom, just to remind you of that. Tom comes in, he walks over here to the corner of the bar. Now, I remember what I said down at the cottage is how it's a movie set. Things are not going to stay the same forever. Over here in this area would have been a raised up VIP dining area. And it had green curtains on it. In that VIP dining area is the prize fighter, Gentleman Jim Corbett, with his entourage. And they're boasting about how Gentleman Jim is on his way to become the next world champion in boxing. Well, Tom's over here at the bar, and this is where he looks very much like a cowboy, because he is a cowboy. They notice him. They ask him something. Words are exchanged. I'm not going to go through the whole dialogue with you, but it ends up with Tom and Gentleman Jim facing off. Gentleman Jim wants to... Get, teach him a lesson. Tom grabs a plate of supper from the bartender, walks out the door, and right behind this young lady in the second window here, out on the porch, this is where he gets jumped by the bodyguards. And then they cut scene again, and that's when they pick up down at the uh, livery where he's laying under his horse, wondering what just happened the last 10 minutes of his life. Now another change with this building I want to point out is this corner door. This was not added until the 1990s. Uh, you can see it up through Tom Horn very closely because there's several scenes in Tom Horn filmed right over here at this end of the bar. That's actually a normal, just 90 degree angle front to the building. But other productions come in. Like I said, they want a certain look. They make the change. Um, I can't speak for how old Tucson determined what changes they can make. But I know with us, we're learning a lot in the two years we've been open of what changes we allow movie companies to make and keep that change. And then certain changes, we tell them, you can do that to the building, but you have to re turn it back into the way it looked before you got it. One of the big things that, that this building has lost was on either side of the porch over here, they used to have rear facing stairwells. And any of them, when you go back as far as Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean onward, you're going to see these two big stairwells. Even in Tombstone, you'll see them. They went up to the back end of the porch and the porch, oh, I'm sorry, the balcony. The balcony itself was much bigger than what you have today. But again, those are the changes that happen here. So folks, what we're going to do, I tell you what, I'm going to give you, we're doing pretty good on time. I'll give you, if you want to take some pictures in here, I won't rush you off. Yeah, we'll be fine. So I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to step out here, but you're welcome to come out either door when you're done. And then we're going to head down to the end of the street. Go crazy. Yeah. And Gettysburg, this stuff's labeled in here too, so. I'm going to watch those pockets aren't certain holes.
attached to the sheriff's office. That, until March of this year, would have been the two-story jailhouse from Tom Horn. I wore black for a month because <laughs> that second story collapsed or the back end of it collapsed during a storm. High winds came, uh, hit up here. So in order to save the first story and to save the Franklin Ranch, we had to tear the rest of the second story off. But I will tell you this. It's not going to be as good as when the second story was here, but I'm going to relay the story anyway. There were three open windows up top, and I used to love to tell the guests, the window to the left, imagine right through that window on the other side is where Tom's jail cell was. So on that second story, at least for the last third of the movie, Steve McQueen, Richard Farnsworth, and Slim Pickens would have been up there filming for quite a while for those scenes. It was very sad when that, when that broke. But I'm getting there. Anyway, <laughs> let's move over here. So let's go to the, the Shallow Valley Mental Asylum. This would have been a key scene. Well, I tell you what, let me go with Tom Horn, and then we'll go to, to Tombstone. So in Tom Horn, that would have been dressed out on the front as the uh, theater playhouse for the town of, um, and I just forgot the name of Tom Horn's town now. Oh, my goodness, that's embarrassing. Anyway. That would have been the theater playhouse. But in the story of Tom Horn, that is also the building where they hang him at the end of the movie. Sorry, spoiler alert there for those of yeah. you who haven't seen it. But what I really liked the attention to detail is they didn't use the outside as the, the theater and the inside as a separate building. That whole building was used as the theater. And in Tom Horn, when he's on the gallows, standing there in shackles, you look over his right shoulder several times, they're going to show the red curtain of the, the stage that he's standing in front of. Now, to Tombstone, if you walk through those double doors there at the bottom, that is that very memorable scene when Doc and White are going to see each other for the last time. That would have been the interior of the Glenwood Springs Sanatorium. That's where Doc and White have their final uh, poker game and their final conversation, and then Doc looks down at his feet and says, oh, that's funny. Meaning he was laughing because he didn't have his boots on. Now over here at Ma Bell's Boarding House, another memorable scene filmed there from the movie Tombstone. If you can imagine that, that is just a facade today, but imagine that is a two-story standalone building. And up on the second story, it's going to have painted on the front the Can Can Restaurant. And that orange door on that porch, that is the scene they filmed when the Earps are leaving town after Morgan is murdered. They bring their wagons, their wagons are parked up here by the dressmaker. They pull him down in front of Ma Bell's, or the can-can, and that's when Wyatt says to Curly Bill, I want you to know it's over. And what does Curly Bill say? Well, bye. Well, bye. bye. <laughs> exactly. So imagine that again, being a two-story standalone building. To the left of that front door is where Powers Booth would have been sitting. To the right would have been Michael Bean as Johnny Ringo. And then Kurt Russell on the wagon sitting there uh, in front of that porch. And then a few seconds later, Sam Elliott as Virgil brings the wagon, his wagon down, and then he parallel parks right next to Kurt Russell's wagon. Anybody here familiar with the movie called Lightning Jack with Paul Hogan from Australia? Crocodile Dundee. Cuba well, Gooding's in that too, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hey. There you go. <laughs> You're on fire. Wow. Somebody had their coffee this morning. <laughs> nope. Yes. That would have been used as a bank earlier, in, not at the very beginning of the movie, because they used a little bit of Mescal, but they predominantly filmed out at Old Tucson for Lightning Jack. This was done in 1994. That is a bank, the bank where they use where early in the movie, Jack, after he breaks away from his gang, he tries to do a bank robbery on his own. He goes into the bank. He goes to announce the stick up. Some people walk in, so he puts his gun away, he stands over here, goes back out again, goes to announce the stick up, people walk in, and they do that several times. Um, but I do recommend, if you can find that movie, it is worth watching. It's a comedy western, Paul Hogan and Cuba Gooding Jr. It, they did a pretty good job with that one. Now, Life and Times, Joe Joy Bean, where are we? How many of us know that movie? Sort of. What's that? Commit. Well, if you take a look over there at our trading post, folks, I want to present to you the Jersey Lily. That would have been used as Roy Bean's saloon, courthouse, and sleeping quarters in the movie. Now, what's important about that building is the majority, vast majority of the story of Roy Bean in that 
film is told either inside the building, out here in the street, on the front porch, or just to the right of it where he had his gallows hung up. So Paul Newman would have done many weeks of filming right out here on this street where we're standing. Now, I haven't felt any energy from him. I'm, I'm, I am just feel the steam of clean energy, but you may feel something as we walk past it, especially the ladies, because I love Paul Newman. Um, I also want to point out before we walk down the street, how many of us have seen Kenny Rogers' Gambler TV movie back in 82, 83? Remember that? Yep. Well, right out here in the middle of the street is where Kenny is going to trip and fall. If you remember when they the train stops and they're warned not to get off because it's a rough town. Bruce Boxleitner's character, the young gambler, gets off and thinks he's going to teach these yo local yokels a lesson. He gets in trouble in the saloon gambling, so Kenny comes in rescue, and then they're r running back across the street to get to the train, which is supposed to be behind the, the hotel. Kenny would trip and fall because he has a bad leg and a cane. So again, maybe you'll feel someone who walked past there. I don't know. All right, folks. Well, let's head on down the street, if you would, please. Alrighty, folks, if you can make your way over here to the alleyway, please. Alrighty, so, Tombstone, the walk down scene to the OK Corral. Remember, it opens up with the four men of the Earp Party walk, or the Earp Posse walking towards the camera. There's dramatic music, drum beats, and do you remember the burning building behind them? If you look down here, so where you guys were at at the People Corral, where our flag is at, you wouldn't have been able to see that in Tombstone, the movie, because that would have been that building they used as the burning building. The Earp Party's walking towards the camera. They then cut, and they show them walking across the street. And that's when the kid comes up and bang, 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 bang. There's a trick they played on you. The four actors are walking this way. They cut scene. The four actors are actually walking in this direction. Walking across the very same street they were coming down. How many of us knew that? No, we don't care. I just ruined the scene for you. You're welcome. <laughs> but you can fact check me because there is a shot after the little kid goes away. They're looking this direction. And this one, Doc tips his hat to Milt Joyce over here on the torch. You'll see our members of the supplies. Work it out. That would have been in these clubs, as I mentioned earlier. And over here in this empty lot would have been a very large, bluish colored building. That would have been Meyer Brothers Clothiers. And that, in front of that building that's no longer here, that's the famous Why Johnny Tyler, You Madcap scene film there. When the Earth Brothers, Doc, and Sheriff Bean are standing over there together talking. You, but you can see those very clearly just for a brief second in that shot. So, folks, our next stop is going to be the OK Corral. So, get your gun hands ready. Anybody need ammo? Merc uh, Vander Spiegel is running a sale. We said no guns We all leave them in the car. <laughs> How about you pretend you're pew, 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 pew. <laughs> all right. So, keep in mind as we walk down this street, we're walking on 4th Street in the movie Tombstone, and you're 
walk in the same steps as Sam Elliott, Kurt Russell, Bill Paxton, and Val Kilmer. So let's head on down. Pew, pew. Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> I need an overcoat, though. <laughs> that is one of the coolest scenes in the movie. <clears throat> Everybody doing okay? Oh, we're going down here. I just wanted to keep an eye on everybody. Sure. And we're going to come back up on the street, folks, if you want to get photos later. Oh, oh yeah. You know where you're at? Yeah, sure do. <laughs> Tell me because I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Corral, right here. Yep. When we come out of here, we're going to go back up so we can get more pictures up there. So, step up here now that we've photo in that uh, borderline see-through outfit, the Earps would have come across and they would have lined up just on this side of the boardwalk. Now I'm going to jump down and you guys are welcome to come on up here to the lot with me. Standing over by that tree there by the Adobe wall, he runs out before the shooting starts. But remember, after the shooting does begin, Ike is standing here by that uh, water uh, barrel. He runs over, and this is where he confronts Wyatt and says, I'm not armed. Wyatt pushes him to the side, and then uh, Ike runs into flying. Remember, then he, bought, he grabs Sheriff Dean's pistol and busts through the window. Here's some behind the scenes info. Now, I have two different stories, the one I trust more than the other, but I'm going to tell you both of them. So he busts through the window, and they use what's called sugar <coughs> glass or candy glass, so it doesn't cut you. Well, a couple problems with that. One, they, they filmed out here June 26th to June 28th in 1993. Now, where's my Georgia people? Those are the coolest months in southern Arizona. Yeah. The coolest months. No. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Well, one, sugar glass doesn't perform well in uh, that kind of heat. It starts to warp. So when they were filming the gunfight over those three days, they're shooting little pellets through here to make the bullet holes. It didn't look very good because of the warping. But here was a problem, adding insult to injury. According to John Farkas' book, a guy, uh, one of the crew members he interviewed said they only brought three sheets of candy glass to film over those three days. And he said that if you look into, when you watch the um, gunfight in slow motion, you can see a lot of lack of continuity. And there, and I did find the one for sure. If you watch the gunfight in slow motion, soon after I um, bust his arm through the window, if you look near his head, there's no window pane. If you see the frame of it, but no pain. A second or two later, they come back to Ike when he's shooting at him, and all of a sudden, the window pane appears. And they knew that going into editing, but guess what? How many of us even knew that that happened, that we were even paying attention to that? We weren't. 
Again, I ruined that scene for you too. You're welcome. There, we're watching the gunfight unfold. We don't care. We're not looking at those kind of details. But those are things we have to do to give you tours, is to give you information on the background of how they made these films. Now, a young man asked me, who, you sir, right? If you guys want to move on up here so you can get a better look at it. So that building you see up there on the ridge, that would have been used in the 1997 TV movie, The Buffalo Soldiers with Danny Glover. Now there were several other buildings on that same location back then. They had several uh, corrals built, a lot of fencing up there. They had two uh, stables built up there. All those are long gone now. We did want to save that. We had every intention uh, two years ago to save that, but last summer, in summer of 22, we had such good monsoons that uh, the roof wasn't in great condition to begin with, but now all that water leaking in, it's, it's ruined a lot of the uh, structure. So, but here's the good news. There may be a guy, right now he's indefinitely postponed the funding issue. So he wants to do, he actually wants to put that down in the room. So that young lady possibly could go out in a literal blaze of glory um, in a film. And we hope she does. And I hate to see her just fall apart. She actually had a very beautiful balcony up until about a year ago or so. And then it just very quickly started to fall down. But here's a good news story, though. If you're standing there at that building and you walk to your left about 100 yards, it takes you down into a little bit of a low depression. The building that sits there is a two-story frontier house. The bottom floor of that frontier house was the original bunkhouse from the TV show The Young Riders. Do we remember that one? They used that bunkhouse for the first three seasons. Then they moved over here and they used Virgil's Cottage from Tombstone as the bunkhouse until the, the uh, series ended. Now, I told you it's a two-story building now. The story behind that is... A production company came out here in August of last year, and they needed to have a two-story frontier house. Well, what they were going to do, take the bunkhouse and put styrofoam facade up on top of it, and then we could just tear that off whenever we were done. they were done filming. Here's the problem, though. Wind out. And all that styrofoam would have broken loose and ended up in Vail. So the owner, Jake, decided that and we negotiated with them we decided that we would build it for them with under their uh, requirements so now we build it as a permanent second story but we're still satisfied knowing that first floor is the young writer's bunkhouse now we can't get out there now but if we do bring back our stagecoach ride which may happen the stagecoach takes you up to the buffalo soldiers and it takes you down to give you a close-up look of the young writer's bunkhouse <laughs> All right, folks, well, let's slide on over here. It served in Tombstone, uh, it served two purposes. The outside was decorated as the oyster house. What is our front porch? This porch didn't exist in the movie Tombstone. This was just, a, a, there was steps leading into it, but the rest of this was all dirt. But you'll see in Tombstone, there's an oyster house sign hanging out here. As the Earps make their way down, when Sheriff Beam challenges them and says, you don't need to go down there, if you look over their heads, you'll see the sign hanging out. But the inside was used as the Galeyville Saloon. This is that scene they filmed in here when Wyatt jumps the horse through the window at the very beginning of the Vendetta Ride sequence in the film. And there's a cowboy getting a shave. There are cowboys sitting at the table playing poker and drinking. And, or they could be playing Old Maid. I don't know what they were playing, but playing cards. And Wyatt jumps the horse in. Now, the, I'm going to give you a quick behind the scenes of that horse jumping sequence. Which, by the way, this is that window where he jumped it in. So we were told for the first year or so that they didn't actually use this building. We were told they built a facade lower to the ground over here in the alleyway. And that's what you actually see when the horse comes through the window. But we found out that while that was the plan, it ended up not being what they actually did. And the man that trained the horse has visited with us twice and told us the real story. So he spent about a month or so training that horse to jump through the window here. But when it came to shooting day, he was confident. I need one one take, and we got it. 
I don't need more than one take. Well, the horse did what he was trained to do. He did jump through the window. The only problem was he didn't know that there's going to be lighting, cameras, people standing in here. So the ju horse jumped through. Holy crap, what is this? The uh, trainer did jump up. He got him calmed down before he started kicking around and busting up things. So he still made good on his promise and only needed one take. It's just nobody told the horse the whole plan. And he was a little surprised. Now, in Tom Horn, this building saw, has seen a lot of changes since it, that movie was made in 1979-80. There were two sets or a set of windows on either side of the, of the face, and right here in the middle would have been a single door. This, folks, and my Tom Horn brother over there can appreciate, right in here is where they filmed the scene when Tom is interrogated by um, Joe Bell, the U.S. Marshal, and as a result of that interrogation, Tom says, if I'd have killed that kid, that'd have been the best shot I ever made and the dirtiest trick I'd ever done. That was done right inside this door. Well, right inside the door here, I should say. So again, another example of how these buildings change over time. What, so what we're seeing here is what was left over from Tombstone. All right, folks, well, we have two more three stops to make, so if you can follow me on up here. Yeah, it's at the point now, I don't even, uh, except for John Horn, but I get stuck in the story. But the rest of it, I still get stuck in the story. I fast forward, write those down, and I always, it's kind of ruined in a way. I don't, yeah, I just study it now. But John Horn is very stuck in the end. Establish with us the viewer, you're in the Oriental because you're standing by Wyatt's ferro tape. They cut and they pick up with Doc, Wyatt, and Morgan standing next to the bar. And that's when Doc asks Wyatt, Do you consider yourself a married man? Because he's referred to, remember that interaction when they were in the birdcage between Wyatt and Josie when she was on stage? Here's the trick they play on us. Cosmonos now has told us we're in the Oriental, but the actors 
Val Kilmer, Kurt Russell, and Bill Paxton are standing, let me get my line of sight, right about here. But we still believe we're in the Oriental. But we're physically over on Campbell and Hatches. And that was the beauty of removing that wall. You as the viewer, we as the viewer don't know any different. We're just going along with the story. But it gave him so much more room now to, to explain and, and describe what he wants to in the story. And then the three men would have walked up here and as they're, they're conversing. And through that corner door behind that uh, love seat, that's where Josie walks in. If you remember, she curtsies to Wyatt for a dance and he ignores her and hurts her feelings and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that's the back story of this building. And then, of course, over here is where we would have had Morgan playing pool with his back to the door. And this is where he would have been shot and dies on the table. All right. We're going to head down the street. One more stop. And you'll be with me forever, I promise. Did you say thank God? Is that what you just said? You know, how did that? What? How did that? It's a thing to make people ask questions. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Warren. Uh -huh. Thank yeah, you. Take, takes a while. Where are you from, <laughs> Georgia? I know. <laughs> I lived in Oklahoma, though, so it's going to be choking. Okay. Sharon Stone and Leonardo DiCaprio. 
And then Russell Crowe's character, Court, is introduced to the story. He gets pushed through, uh, slides over here on the floor. He's in shackles. And right over here is where uh, Herod's henchmen try to hang him to intimidate him and get him to go along with being in the country. So, folks, that wraps up the tour. Thank you very much for your attention. Tim, thanks for being my uh, sponge. Um, you're welcome to stay in here as long as you want. We have pictures of the big budget movies hanging up here. Uh, Arnie, are we selling sarsaparilla? We have sarsaparilla and root beer. All right. We have some on ice. Also, you can get buy four packs if you like to take home and have later. And you're welcome to go over to our gift shop. We walk past it over here. Yes, ma'am? Take them to the gift okay, Susan can take you over to the gift shop. But here's what I ask you folks please do not go down the street by yourselves. If you desperately need a photo, Tim, um, that you didn't get taken while we were out on the tour, I'll be happy to escort you down. But again, that's for your own safety.